Hi, I'm Donna and we're about halfway through this um, cast on toolkit series now. Um, the alternating cable cast on is another two needle um, cast on. So you need both needles. It's, um, it's a variation on the cable cast on we did last um, time. Um, but it's, you know, obviously got a twist. Um, it's neat and firm. Um, it's a bit stretchy, but not too stretchy. So um, it's great for kind of hems of jumpers or sweaters. It's it's great for cuffs as well, um, unless it's a very tight cuff. Um, it, may, it probably, it may be okay for a sock, depending how tight you knit, but there are better better more stretchy cast-ons for, for that sort of thing okay um, but it can work be worked to resemble any um, rib pattern um, whether it's knit one purl one rib or knit two purl two rib you can um, kind of reproduce um, the right effect with this so um, yeah that's it really so let, that's enough chat. Pick up your needles, pick up your yarn, pull up your chair. We'll have a look at this alternating cable cast on now. So here is the alternating cable cast on. And like you can see I've done a bit of ribbon here. And just look how nice and neat that that looks for a rib edge. Very often you'd have a sort of row of knobbles or something along there. So and it's building on from our last video our last tutorial this is a very similar to cable cast on it's a, but it's a variation on it okay so as we did before we're going to leave an end of about four to six inches and we're gonna do a slip knot okay for those who need a reminder on a slip knot you probably would do it without even thinking but as soon as I mention slip knot, people think, what's that? Okay, so I've gone around in a circle. I'm going to get my knitting needle now. And I am going to just pop that through there. And then I can pull that up. Okay, I'm grabbing my yarn. Oop, it's gone on the floor. It's gone walkabout. That's fine. Okay. So, okay, so that's our alternating cable cast on, and um, that's the third of seven um, cast on methods we'll be looking at for our cast on toolkit. Um, hope you found that one interesting. I wonder if you try it out. Um, I think it does make a, a difference for a ribbed edge um, without too much kind of headache. It's it's reasonably easy to remember how that works. So um, I'll be making the cast on toolkit available as a PDF with all the videos and my notes together. Um, and the link for that will appear <laughs> mysteriously at the end of this series or you know if you want the heads up beforehand just uh, subscribe to my email list links also provided and I'll give you the heads up uh, if it's been helpful for you I hope it has um, you might find things start to merge together a bit now All right I'll keep it brief okay if this has been helpful I right. I hope this has been helpful to you if so please give it a thumbs up and I really hope you'll join me next time um, we'll be looking at cast on number four <laughs> and that's going to be uh, oh, we're going to go um, and explore long tail cast ons now and we'll start off with the continental cast on this was actually the cast on that I was first taught by my mum when I first started to I'm doing this now, that's no bloody good, is it? So next time we're going to be kicking off some long tail cast-ons and, well, a couple. Next time we're going to start looking at some long tail cast-ons and then we're going to start with continental cast-on. This is um, actually the first ever cast-on that I learned. That's the one my mum taught me. And um, I thought for many years it was the only way. It still is a very good favourite all-rounder um, and I use it a lot. So I hope you'll join me then. 
don't forget, bring your needles, bring some yarn, pull up a chair. Look forward to seeing you then. Bye bye. Much as we did with the cable cast on and the knit cast on, this is the first stitch. Okay, so pop your needle in as if to knit, bring the yarn round, pull the loop through, and then always come round to the front for a cable cast on and go just transfer that stitch across that way and always do it that way. And then we've got two um, stitches and this will be the last two stitches of your row. So if you're doing knit one, purl one and you're doing an even number of stitches, the la you you're going to do knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, all across the row. So that last stitch would be a purl and that would be a knit. Okay, so we're going to then carry on um, ready for that row. So instead of going through those two, like we we might, we're going to actually go as if to purl through that gap. Okay, and so we'll purl and then we'll pull that stitch out there. And then we'll still keep the same way always, bring that needle tip to the front to get that stitch across. So that was a purl, okay? So then this one's gonna be a knit. So we're gonna go always through the last stitch you've done and the one before. We're gonna go through the gap again, okay? Going through the gap and we're gonna knit this one. Pull that through, transfer it across. Okay, and three guesses what we're going to do next. <laughs> you guessed it, we're going to actually go through the back again and purl. Okay, and if you've got a bit tight there, you need to kind of loosen it off a bit and try and make sure you keep it loose, otherwise it's going to be quite tricky to be working through the stitches because you need a nice clean sweep there. You don't want to be snagging any yarn as you, you go in. Okay, so that's a purl one. Okay, and before you actually tug this yarn to tighten that, that's a good time to get your needle in. Okay, when it's nice and loose and then give that a little tug. So that one's a knit one. Okay, and then before we tighten it, we're gonna get that needle in that way ready to purl. Okay, so knit. So it is alternating basically. That's why it's called alternating cable. That was a knit one, purl one. Knit one. Purl one. Carry on across the row. Keep going till you've got about um 20 um stitches and if you can't remember now i'm thinking oh now did i just do a pearly or a knitty <laughs> um basically the if you look you can see some of these legs look longer than others longer one short one long one short one long one short one so the long ones are the knit ones and the short ones are the ones that you've purled okay so that's my tip of the day because you will, you know, your mind wanders, you're thinking, oh, what's for tea, all of that. Um, so I now know that was a long one, that's a short one, so this one needs to be a knit. Okay. That's a knit one. And we'll do a pearly. And a knit one. And a pearly. Call them what you like. I'm going with knit ones and pearlies as the mood takes. And you would carry on, as I say, till you've got enough stitches. Knit one, purl one. And this works with any rib. You could have done t knit two, purl two. You could have done purl one, knit three, purl one, knit three rib. And just be thinking ahead of how those stitches would be on that first row 
and for the purl stitches you go the purl way and the knit stitches you go in in that way okay and as I say you can keep track by looking at long ones and short ones so this was going to be a knit one purl one rib row we said we our last stitch then in that row of an even number of stitches would be a purl so that means our last stitch at this end needs to be a knit okay and we can tell that again looking at our long ones and short ones so then you crack on with your first row so that was the knit one purl into the shorter ones knit ones are the longer looking ones purl knit so we're going to purl knit carry across the row okay and you just tighten that up a little there if you need to so that is our first row and you can see that neat kind of ribbed edge appearing okay so that's our alternating cable cast on and um, that's the third of seven um, cast on methods we'll be looking at for our cast on toolkit um, hope you found that one interesting i wonder if you try it out um, I think it does make a, a difference for a ribbed edge um, without too much kind of headache. It's, it's reasonably easy to remember how that works. So I'll be making the cast on toolkit available as a PDF with all the videos and my notes together. Um, and the link for that will appear <laughs> mysteriously at the end of this series. Or, you know, if you want the heads up beforehand, just uh, subscribe to my email list. Links also provided. And I'll give you the heads up. I hope this has been helpful to you. If so, please give it a thumbs up. And I really hope you'll join me next time. Um, we'll be looking at cast on number four. <laughs> Next time we're going to start looking at some long tail cast ons and that we're going to start with continental cast on. This is um, actually the first ever cast on that I learned. That's the one my mum taught me. And um, I thought for many years it was the only way. It still is a very good favourite all rounder um, and I use it a lot. So I hope you'll join me then. Don't forget, bring your needles bring some yarn, pull up a chair. Look forward to seeing you then. Bye-bye.